on top, they hate to see us on, they hate to see us come up, they hate we on, they hate the moves that we make, because it's made to break them, we give them knowledge on tracks, and hope our words can save them, I guess it's hard to give props, when you know you lesser, so we ride on your heels, I hope you feel the pressure, rappers taking a roll, my shoes are not- Welcome to this episode of Philly on the Rides, as you know I'm your host Michael W. Pleasant, we are actually pleased to be in the Balakin Wood Studios of WDAS <laughs> FM. The voice of the young lady next to me, you actually hear her in over 20 markets, but she makes her home here in Philadelphia. Miss Frankie Darcel. I'm here, Mike. Welcome to Philly on the Rise. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Yes, I'm excited. Yes. I'm excited. Glad to have you here, obviously. Yeah. How long have you been in Philly now? Uh, it'll be six years in March. So, ooh, um, six years yeah. in March. Six years in March. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, okay. Time has flown by yes. really quickly. Yeah. Where do you go for your cheese sticks? Um, you know, Okay, Phil, are you ready for this one? Um, I don't really eat cheesesteak. Okay, all right. No, I really don't. I'm sorry. But, you know, I think they're great. Okay. Um, I actually, and only, only because I've never been really a big red meat person. There's chicken cheesesteaks. Yeah, I've done the chicken cheesesteaks. Okay. Um, and I can tell you when I do, it's Wawa. Okay, Wawa. That's I not got, a I cheesesteak. got, I, everybody says that. That is not I'm a just two a big Wawa. I'm just herself. saying, I'm just a big Wawa fan, and okay. that's what I normally do. But I, I did say that I've got to get the big grand tour. Okay. Of being able to find the best. Uh, chicken cheese steaks and cheese steaks sure. in Philadelphia. So that time is coming. So if anybody you know has a free afternoon one day and you want to take me on that tour, I'll be glad to go. <laughs> a free afternoon. Your afternoons yeah, right. are very, right. very booked. Very booked. Very booked. That's why I haven't time. had that. That's why, Mike, I haven't had the opportunity to have my grand tour of the great cheese steaks because I'm just so busy. But that day is gonna come. That day is gonna come. Filling the rise is gonna take you. Yeah. I'll get you a really right. good chicken yeah. cheese. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna hold you to that. Uh, you please do so. <laughs> you are in over 20 markets. As yeah, you mentioned. I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are an author. Yeah, uh, one I of am. your fancies is theater. You're also a mom. I am. Uh, the accolades go on and on. Am I missing anything? <laughs> um, probably, but keep going. Okay. All right. <laughs> so yeah. let's talk about this thing called radio because yeah. you've been in radio for years. A long time. What is it about radio that draws you? You know, my major, I'm a graduate of Morgan State University in Baltimore, and uh, my major was anatomy and physiology. I was a All-American basketball player in high school and college. And so I wanted to work in sports and sports management, but I could not get through anatomy and physiology. And one day I had to, I walked into the class and they had these squirrels already open and we had to find the arteries. And I couldn't do it. My stomach just wouldn't allow me to do it. So I walked away and my next class was a speech communications class. And uh, I walked by the radio station and Kwaisi Mpume, who used to be the uh, president of the NAACP, the national president, was on the air. He's from Baltimore. And I was like, wow, that looks fun. And, you know, I started focusing on that and I haven't looked back. Um, so that's how I actually made my transition into into radio, just um, transferring from anatomy and physiology and uh, deciding I wanted to do communications. And, and it was perfect, perfect for me um, to do that. So that's quite the transition from anatomy and physiology right. into radio. Yeah. But now it's yeah. been excellent years. Year. A lot of years. A, A lot, lot of years. years. Yeah. Let's talk about goals because being able to overcome so many of the obstacles mm-hmm. that are in this particular line of work and yet to stay strong and yet be yeah. into so many markets, how did you actually do that? It's been tough. You know, um, when I started, I started in the 80s when we actually had turntables and what we used to call carts that were, um, that looked like eight track cassette tapes. That's and really then old school. Made the transition, it's really old school, and then made the transition to CDs. And now everything is digital. So I've, I, you know, I've morphed through those and have been able to make that that transition. And there are other folk who started when I started or were doing it when I was doing it that have not been able to make that transition. So first, I, I just think that God gave me um, a a a decision to make sure that I empower and talk with my community. Um, so I've always been able to do that. And I started in Norfolk, Virginia, uh, working at a radio station. From there, I went to Raleigh, Durham. From Raleigh, Durham, I went to Charlotte, from Charlotte to Detroit, and from Detroit to Philadelphia. So each of those have been incremental steps to what I wanted to do, was to work top five major market. And sure. each of those markets have been top five ma- major markets. From Philadelphia, there are three places to go, primarily for me too, which would be New York and LA, which I don't want to say officially I'm not interested in doing, but at this stage, 
stage in my career. Um, you know, I think Philadelphia is a great place uh, to be, be a major in a major market, and to be back on the East Coast. Originally from Brooklyn, so yeah. nothing like the East Coast. Um, so it's been tough. I've had to not take a lot of things personal, but it's it's my love for what I do. Radio is what Frankie does well, as she works for iHeartRadio and is heard in over 20 markets. Always best yard to be. And throwbacks to 105.3 WDAS with the home of the Holiday Jam. And it's happening December 22nd. It's going to be at the Vet Philly. And you need to get your tickets. Do it today. This one is absolutely going to be a sellout. Tickets online right now at WDASFM.com. Happy Friday to you. Frankie Dartel with you on the way. I've got some concert tickets for you. We are going to Atlantic City. It's the All Stars of Hip Hop. It's coming to the Boardwalk Hall. It's going to be in Atlantic City. Write this date down January 20th. You don't want to miss it. Not by nature, Cool Mo D, Slick Rick, Big Daddy Kane, and more. Tickets available for you at Ticketmaster.com, the Boardwalk Hall, a box office as well. And I've got your tickets coming up just about 3.40, so don't forget that. On the way, more Philly's best star to be in throwbacks, 105.3 DAS. How many people actually get together, and a lot of people have heard the term, it's no business like show business? Correct. Radio is the same thing. It's the theater of the mind that I could use my personality, my depth of critical thinking to make a living. And, you know, God has just blessed me to be able to do that, you know. Yeah. So you learn along the way that it takes skill. And then you get to a point in your career where it's past skill. It becomes skill and relationships. And then I believe it becomes then skill, relationships, and learning how to become political and, and, and continue to do this job. So, you know, I, I think I've done that. Understood. As we look, take a look at your wall, there's so many accolades from city yeah. council, yeah. from the mayor. Yeah. What was your proudest achievement? Oh, my goodness. My, my proudest achievement in radio? Yes. Um, I've done a lot. And I would hate to say that I've had the greatest achievement because there have been so many wonderful moments. Um, but the proudest achievement is me probably meeting a listener. Oh. And I do a feature every day called The Nourishment for the Soul. It's my on-air prayer. And I think one of my proudest achievements is to meet someone who says, what you said affected me. Hmm. You know, the nourishment for the soul, that day I was really in a funk and it made sense. I actually spoke to a listener once who said that she literally was thinking about committing suicide. And she said, you know, I didn't have a gun in my hand or pills in my hand. She said, but what you said just brought clarity. It was almost as if you were speaking to me. So with all the accolades and all the work that I've done, I think, you know, I appreciate all of those. But I think more than anything, it's when a listener will say to me something I did where I utilized this platform that I have to affect their life. I do something called Frankie's Families every year where um, I raise money, get together with uh, businesses in the community to do food baskets for families. And um, one of my greatest accomplishments is to uh, get a card from a family who said, my husband lost his job and because of that basket, we were able to have a great Thanksgiving. I think that's one of my proudest moments. It is amazing to be used by the universe to yeah. touch people's lives, to yeah. encourage them, to kind of help them get to the next level. Yeah. That is an amazing yeah. uh, honor that you yeah. do have. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about your theater because that's a, a, a love of yours. I understand yeah. right now it you're is. in the midst of writing yeah. your yeah. own yeah. production. Yeah. How's yeah. that been for you? It's been good. I um, always had, um, I, I, because theater and uh, entertainment and radio to me is all entertainment. I've always, in the back of my mind, wanted to. Because if in another world, I would have either been a, an attorney or I would have been a singer. Okay. And I'm not going to be either one of those. So, what's the way I could get the closest to each of those is to produce and direct a, a piece about a law and then to actually direct and produce great actors. So, sure. yes. I started producing and directing theater 10 years ago. I'm doing Intozaki Shenge's For Color Girls, which went over extremely well. I love working with people. Um, and then I did um, 12 angry men you know the the legendary uh tv movie um i've done and i've done uh vagina monologues and now on the crest of doing james Wells and johnson's um god's trombones which is going to be november 9th 10th and 11th uh, okay. here in philadelphia um so i i just enjoy working that part of my brain yeah. and exercising that creative part of my brain almost like you know birthing a child so yeah. we do the audition process and after the auditions we do the hard work and from the hard work then this opening night and the three or four nights uh of shows and just watch 
you know, the work come to life. I've got an incredible, great team yeah. of people that have been working with me. And I do the shows both here in Philadelphia and Detroit. The last couple of productions I've done have been here in Philadelphia. And Philly has been um, so receptive to what I like to call my pieces intellectual theater. Because we love Frankie Darcy. <laughs> Thank you. You're now Thank one you. of us. <laughs> yeah, you I am. Right? So you yeah, are. so Philly has, been, Philly has been so lovely, and I thank them for that. Yeah. You, you mentioned entertainment, and right now, and all over the entertainment world, is Kanye West and his yeah. rant at the White House yeah. and some yeah. of the other things he's posted on Twitter. So hear me out with this question, because if you could peel back some of the craziness that comes out of his mouth, is there actually some truth to that? So at the White House speech, he did speak about bringing jobs to Detroit, or Chicago, if you will. Uh, he also mentioned abolishing mm -hmm. the trap door that's in the 13th mm -hmm. Amendment. See, my question to you would become, you know, here, here's my piece. I believe that every person on this planet has a right to an opinion, and he does. Correct. And that's my comment. He, he has the right to an opinion. Um, I think the danger um, for people who are high profile, who don't understand or can't discern the difference between when they are being used as an asset or they become a liability. And I think for Kanye, he has become a liability. Mm -hmm. And he is not what he believes to be an asset. Frankie Darcel, it's been a pleasure these past uh, few minutes chatting with you. Uh, I think I heard earlier, weaving through what you said, that you are now home in Philadelphia. Is that, is that what I heard, that Philadelphia is now Philadelphia is my home. I pay enough taxes here. Philadelphia is my <laughs> home. Philadelphia is home. I think that um, I, I really, you know, Philadelphia can be a tough place. Oh, sure. Um, and, you know, it took a little bit to get my feet uh -huh. planted. And uh, Philly has opened its arms uh, to me. And I've done the same. And I hope that I continue. Uh, to be as good to Philadelphia as Philadelphia has been to me. I've made some great relationships here and I've met some incredible people. And you know, you find your lane. Sure, you know, sure. You find your lane. I think I found that. Okay. And uh, looking forward to just doing more here. Um, you know, my daughter finished high school here. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Went on to college and now she's in graduate school. So, you know, Philly is going to be something when I write my, my next book. Okay. There will be a chapter clearly about Philadelphia. And a chapter maybe about this segment here that we yeah. did on Philly on the Rise. A little <laughs> yeah. small. Yeah, yeah. A little That's small. Right. I will. I will. Absolutely. I will. Thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure. The pleasure and, uh, is mine. Definitely the had a good time. Mine. Right. Absolutely. Thanks for watching this episode of Philly on the Rise as we have chatted with Frankie Darcel, who's using her gifts and talents and her platform to change the lives of others. That They hate to see us on top, they hate to see us on They hate to see us come up, they hate we on They hate the moves that we make, because it's made to break them We give them knowledge on tracks, and hope our words can save them I guess it's hard to give props, when you know you lesser So we ride on your heels, I hope you feel the pressure Rappers taking a roll, my shoes that never fit them Before you come at a king, I let my soldiers get them I'm from Philly, where hot corners, they turn chilly Tight shirts with tight jeans, they never feel me Young boys confused, they think I'm too preachy Pull head in the game and still wreck my city I'm from Philly where hot corners they turn chilly Tight shirts with tight jeans they never feel me